G'day, I'm Sean from ARRI and this is a deep dive into the SAM accessories for the Alexa 35. SAM stands for Stabilizer Adapter Mount and we first brought out SAM plates quite a few years ago when the Trinity was released because we wanted to have a really easy way to mount our cameras inside that system while still offering a low profile plate and the ability to balance the cameras quite easily within the sled inside the Trinity. Now as time went on we developed longer versions of those plates most likely to support the SRH3 and 360 and we also developed the SAM4 which will work with a number of our PCA equipped third party cameras. When we were designing the Alexa 35, we really wanted to make sure that the SAM plates were an integral part of the whole accessory package, as we think it's a great way to be able to quickly transition from, say, production style shooting or handheld shooting into a stabilizer, like the Trinity, or actually now a bunch of third party stabilizers as well. So, we have the SAM 5, which is for the Movi Pro, and will also work with the Movi M15. We also have a little plate called the adjustable top plate for Movi, which is designed for the top half of the Movi cage. The SAM 6 will work with all existing ARRI Trinities, as well as the Trinity 2 and Artemis 2, and the stabilized remote heads SRH3 and 360. The SAM 7 is designed for the Artemis 1, as well as for GPI Pro rigs, and it will fit into a Steadicam M1 and M2. However, we've designed the SAM 8 specifically for those Steadicam products, as you usually need a longer Steadicam plate, as the GPI Pro and the Artemis top stages are quite a bit shorter, whereas the Tiff and Steadicam products are longer. So the SAM 8 is for those devices. The SAM 9 is for the Ronin 2, and you can also use the Movi, um, the adjustable top plate for Movi inside the Ronin cage, and I talk about that a little bit longer in the video. Now, before we get into each one of these plates in more detail, I just want to point out that there are also some accessories designed to work with the SAM plates. So, the most frequently used one will be the SSB1, the stabilizer support bracket. And if you have a SAM6, a SAM7 or a SAM8, then you'll notice that there are these threaded holes at the front here, which will allow you to connect an SSB1. So just grab your convenient 3mm Allen key. Once you have that screwed in, you'll notice that there are a whole bunch of mounting holes here. So I have M4 spaced holes for a bracket like the RMB3, for example. And I also have a 3 8 inch hole here, which would mount something like an RMB6, which might be quite nice if I wanted to, you know, mount a single rod out the front of my stabilizer, for example. And then we also have these wider spaced holes, which are designed for our lightweight 15 mm console. So these two brackets together will offer you lightweight 15mm lens support and you can mount them in you know, different orientations depending on how high you need the rod support to be. So that's a great way to add a lens support if you're using a slightly longer and heavier lens into your stabilizer plate, but they will only work with the SAM6, the SAM7 or the SAM8. The SAM 8 is also kind of nice because it's a flat front on this plate, unlike the others which need to have a bit of a dovetail to allow you to put it into the Artemis, for example. There are more mounting holes here, so you can mount that lightweight console directly into the SAM 8 instead of having to use the SSB1. So that's quite a nice one. Now we can also mount an RMB3 or any of the brackets we have with those spaced M4 holes to the front of the SAM 8 too. All right, let's look at the SAM 5. Oh, and please ignore the continuity error you're about to see. I couldn't get all the devices in the room at the same time. The first plate in ascending order is the SAM 5 for Movi Pro, and it will also work with the M15 as well. The SAM 5 is very, very similar to this SAM 9, which is for the Ronin, and both of these plates are designed to be as small and as lightweight and particularly as thin as possible so that you maximize the amount of space inside the gimbal itself. Now, because they're very thin, there isn't any room for threaded holes on these plates. So if you're looking for a plate which you can use as a kind of generic, very low profile plate for the Alexa 35, I'd recommend you look at the SAM 6, the SAM 7 or the SAM 8 instead. Now, 
The first thing to talk about with the Movi is power. Alexa 35 is a 24 volt camera and off the shelf the Movi cannot supply 24 volt camera power. It can only supply 12 volt. Now there are a number of third party uh, solutions to this on the market. Obviously I have an Ignite Digi Movi here thanks to the guys for sending it up and theirs is fully tricked out with all these orange parts including their Movi Power Expansion Box, which is back here. And that will take 24 volt power from TB50 battery plates on the side here, and then feed it into the camera. And that works really well. But again, there are other options on the market as well. Now, in terms of the mechanical parts, uh, the SAM5 itself is this plate down here. So that is a double dovetail plate. Um, it's which means that you can slide it on both the top and the bottom. So it'll slide within the bud one on the bottom of the camera itself, and it will slide in the Movi uh, little dovetail receiver down the bottom. So that's small and easy. You get a heap of um, balance range because of both of those dovetails there. On the top, we have the adjustable top plate for Movi. So this guy is really small and thin, and it's designed to be that way so that it will live under a top handle when you're running around in you know, production mode. But it works very well here. It's basically a little hot shoe. It comes with a little Delrin block, which we like to call a garage for screws because it comes with four screws. You're probably only going to use two of them at one time. Um, so instead of having a bag, which you might lose, there's this little guy here. Now, the benefit of these plates is that I can pull the whole system out and then put on my top handle, base plate, viewfinder, battery, everything without using any tools. Now I'm going to demonstrate that for you now. Bear in mind that I'm not a gimbal operator so this might look a little janky. Um, it's good to point out that the top plate as well will work on both of the LMS4 top plates and the UAP. So the UAP3 is the lightweight top plate that comes in the lightweight set and then the LMS4 that comes in the production set. So it'll work with both of them and both will fit inside the cage. Now from this point it's very easy for me to screw in my lightweight camera handle if this was a lightweight set or to put on my CCH5 if it was the production set. Now I can quickly put on my viewfinder and you can see that under the top handle I still have my plate attached, which means that it's very easy to go back into the gimbal if I like. So from here, connect the viewfinder cable, and then I can put any one of the little base plates underneath. I have the CSP2 here, which when I line up goes in very nicely. And then we're kind of ready to throw this on your shoulder or something like that. So it's very straightforward. All right, let's look at the SAM6. There are two versions of the SAM6. This is the 12 inch or 250 millimeter version and there's also this 18 inch or 450 millimeter version and they will both work with the Artemis 2, the Trinity 1 and Trinity 2 and the stabilized remote head SRH3 and 360. The SAM6 will of course also work with the Maxima. Now, the features of this plate, well, both of them, of course, have the dovetail channel at the bottom for mounting into a stabilizer, and then the top dovetail here is for the Alexa 35. And that means you have a huge range of balance potential because you can slide the camera and the plate together inside the stabilizer, and you can also just slide the camera along the top of this plate. Now, on the bottom, there are a range of 3 8 and quarter inch threaded holes, which means that you can use this as kind of a generic plate as well and maybe screw this into a Steadicam plate should you wish to. There are a bunch of different accessories for both of these SAM plates. I think the most obvious one, if you go for the long SAM 6, is that there is a channel up here which supports the compact lens support. And that's a really nice way if you have a longer lens, such as a zoom, and you need to use a lens support for it, but you don't necessarily want to run rods underneath the camera, or maybe you can't because you have quite a tight configuration, well then this lens support fits right inside the plate itself and it clamps down its Quite a cool mechanism actually. Now we also have another way to run a lens support on, or in fact kind of two other different ways to run a lens support on a SAM6. The first one I kind of talked about in the intro, you know we can screw in a SSB1 at the front here and then you can run our 15mm lightweight console in the front of that which will give you access to using a support like the LLS1 that is our lightweight lens support because it basically just gives you 
15 mil rods. Now the only downside with this is that I can't now put the if I had a camera mounted on here, I can't put it in from behind the Trinity. It has to go in from the front because we have this large, you know, section here with rods and a lens support and a map box perhaps, whatever you like. So that's one option. Now the other option is to run one of these brackets. Now this is the SSB2 19 millimeter and there is an SSB2 15 millimeter. Now that's 15 mil studio, not 15 mil lightweight. You'll notice on the side that there is actually a bunch of index markings here so that you can remember or measure the correct height from the uh, optical axis of your lens to where a lens support needs to sit. But it basically means that I can quickly uh, slide this in like this and lock it off. And then out the front of my rig, which I'm just going to demonstrate on the Trinity, because I can slide this in here, for example. And then I can run 19mm bars off the front with a full-on, you know, normal lens support. So I can run a very, very large zoom inside a SRH360, for example, on this camera, thanks to the SSB2. Now, you'll notice that there's one other difference between these two plates, and that is the location of the locking lever. And that's because you can actually swap the locking lever from being at the top into the bottom. And because the Alexa 35 has that wider dovetail channel, you won't be able to actually run the SSB2 with the locking lever at the top, but that's okay, you just unscrew it, it's like three parts, and then flip the lever, and then it will lock off very nicely under here, and work like so. Another accessory for the SAM6, and also a bunch of the other SAM plates that we have for the Trinity and older or third-party cameras, well, that's the Dub1. That's the Dovetail Utility Base, and it's basically the dovetail receiver that's found on a Trinity, Trinity 2, Artemis 2, or a stabilized remote head. And on the bottom, you have threaded holes, and actually a built-in touch-and-go 120 plate. That's the same size as is on the BPA6. And what that means is that I can just drop this straight in here and lock it off. So I might like to mount this to a camera cart, for example, and have my rig built to go straight into a Trinity or into a remote head, but docked in a cart. And you'll notice that it's quite thick, and that's so that you can still have it flat with the SSB1 and the lightweight rod console on the front as well. So it will still be manageable and you know, not sitting like this. So that's great. Now, the other thing to talk about with our stabilized remote head and the Trinity 2 is this guy. So this is the TAB1. Now that is the top attachment bracket and it will basically allow you to secure the top of your camera to the ring on both the Trinity, Trinity 2 and on our stabilized remote head. So this bracket will clip into 15mm rods and that is one way of securing the camera. Usually if you're running a long lens in particular or quite a heavy setup, you want to be able to secure the top and the bottom so that the camera package is really rigidly locked into the gimbal and then you won't get any vibration. So that is one of the two ways that we offer to secure the top. The other is the Top Point Kit, which is developed by Mike Johnson in the US and resold by us. It's basically a selection of small stainless steel rods and clamps so that you can get some triangulation going with cameras in the top of your stabilized remote head. Time for SAM7. Sorry, I should have mentioned power for those devices. So if you have an Artemis 1, Artemis 2, Trinity 2, SRH3 or SRH360, then you're fine. All of those devices will natively supply 24 volt camera power. If you have a Trinity one, then you'll just need to make sure that you have the 24 volt upgrade for your Trinity, which we've offered for a few years now. If you're running a Maxima, it's a little more tricky as the Maxima will not supply 24 volt camera power natively. However, because that device can carry a 30 kilo or 66 pound payload, putting a small beam out battery on the back of the camera is hopefully not the end of the world. All right, on to SAM7. So, the SAM7 was developed for the Artemis 1. The Artemis 2 uses the SAM6. And it will also work with the GPI Pro Rig. Now, it will also physically fit in a Steadicam M1 and M2, but those devices have quite a bit of a longer top stage, so you generally want a longer plate for more 
balance room there. So check out the SAM 8 instead for a steady cam. Now the SAM 7 is basically just the standard camera plate on the bottom which includes the little groove here for those safety stoppers. And don't forget that you can add an SSB1 with a lightweight rod console and put that at the front of the plate if you'd like to mount rods. The LLS1 lens support works really well for lightweight 15 rods and you can even put a studio zoom in that lens support instead of using 19mm bars. Now, the other thing to mention, obviously Artemis is totally fine with 24 volt camera power. It supports that natively, no worries. And I have one other thing to show you, which is actually an unreleased part. That's this guy, the Dub2. And what it's gonna let me do is come straight off the Artemis here with my little quick release. And then I can drop straight in to this Dub2. So that is the dovetail utility base and it works just like the Dub1 which I showed in the SAM6 section. It's quite tall which is nice because it lifts the camera off the ground unlike some other shorter plates and it means I can still have bars and lens support there. On the bottom of that plate are threaded holes and a integrated touch and go 120 plate which is the same size as Ronford and a lot of O'Connor and Sackler plates as well. Time for SAM8. The SAM-8 has been designed primarily for the Tiffin Steadicams, particularly the M1 and the M2. Now, the mechanical mounting interface here is actually the same as is on the Artemis 1 or a GPI Pro rig, as well as a bunch of other different rigs. So you could use the SAM-7 instead of the SAM-8. But the SAM-8 has been designed for the Steadicam because it features those little stoppers that are needed as the safety end stops. And because a Tiffin top stage is quite a bit longer than some other systems, a longer plate will help you get better balance. So you can use them interchangeably. If you want a long plate for an Artemis 1, go for the SAM 8. It'll totally work. Um, it's just this is what we've designed you know, each of the different styles of plate for. So the other nice things are we have witness marks down here in inches, just like on a normal Steadicam plate. And at the front and the back, we have threaded holes that will take both the RMB3 style mounting interface as well as the interface for an SSB1, the stabilizer support bracket, which gives you a 3 8 inch hole and a bunch of other options. And because it is quite a flat plate, we actually can fit in the holes required for the 15mm lightweight console itself. So I can put that back here without having to use the SSB1 as an adapter, which I do have to use on the SAM6 and the SAM7. Now power for Steadicam is generally pretty fine. Most Steadicams can supply 24 volt camera power. Certainly the M1 and the M2 can. You just have to be careful because there is one camera power output which will supply either 12 volt or 24 volt depending on what cable you have. So most of the cables that were probably produced back in the day for Alexa Mini, which uses the same power input connector as the Alexa 35, well, they were most likely going to be 12 volt cables because the Alexa Mini could accept 12 volt power. You need 24 volt for the Alexa 35. So if you plug everything together and your batteries are fully charged, but you can't turn the camera on and the little status indicator light that's next to the power input, if that's flashing red, well, that means that there isn't enough voltage to turn the camera on, so you need to make sure that you have the right cable with you. In terms of other things that you can do, well, of course, it's quite easy to take this whole system out of the Steadicam, and then I can drop it into my Dub2, which is a actually, at the moment, unreleased part. It's coming very soon, but it's basically a little plate adapter that accepts those SAM6 uh, sorry, SAM 7 and SAM 8 plates. We have the Dub 1 for the SAM 6. You know, it's quite thick so that if I had a lens support here, it wouldn't hit the deck. And there are threaded holes in the bottom. And there's also an integrated touch and go 120 plate in there. But of course, I could just slide out the SAM 8, slide in one of my base plates. And the very nice thing is that I can throw my top handle and viewfinder straight on the top here put a battery in and then I'm ready to go for production style shooting. You'll get to see me build a whole rig in just a second with the SAM 9 for the Ronin. So Alexa 35 in the Ronin 2. Now we make a competing product to the Ronin. It's called the Maxima and personally I find it way more easier to balance and you're not limited with the length of your camera package as you are here. 
but we know that a lot of people use Ronin too, so we've made you know, some little accessories that make your life a little bit easier. The first thing to talk about, I think, is power because the Ronin 2 cannot support 24 volt cameras natively. Even though the TB50 batteries up here, they're both 25 volt batteries, um, so they will power the camera totally fine, but there's no way to get that battery voltage out except for at the top here at the battery hanger. So the first solution that we're already seeing a lot of people use is one of these cables, which goes from the 10 pin Limo connector at the top of the Ronin into, and then you run down here, just into the normal camera power input. Now, that is gonna limit your pan range because you have a cable now connecting the fixed part of the Ronin into the gimbal itself, but it's not that often that you need 360 degrees of pan. And if you do, you're probably on a drone with a custom power solution anyway. So that's a good option. You can also just run a B mount battery inside the gimbal itself. And I've managed to run a 290 watt hour battery with a master anamorphic on the front. Um, and because it's such a short camera body, it really lends itself to balancing nicely. So that is possible without counterweights. But in terms of the mechanical accessories, so the main one is at the bottom here. So this little bracket in here, this is the SAM9, and that is the stabilizer adapter mount we offer to go from the dovetail at the bottom of the Alexa 35, that's the bud one, into the receiver here for the Ronin. So that's just a small mechanical plate. It's really lightweight, it's really strong, and it does let you have two um, methods for adjustment because there are two dovetails, one on the Ronin and one on the camera. So even though it's a short plate, there's a lot of range of, of motion there. Now at the top, I'm running a Movi adapter plate. So that's our adjustable top plate for the Movi. And the reason I'm running that is it's because it's a very small and lightweight plate which will sit underneath the top handle, either this is a CCH5 or the lightweight camera handle um, so that I can leave it there when I'm in production mode, which is quite nice. So when I change into gimbal mode, I don't need to actually unscrew anything. To make that work, I'm using another third-party part. This is Ignite Digi's Ronin to Movi top plate adapter, and I would leave that attached to the Ronin. It then makes the Ronin have the same interface as the top of a Movi. Now, because this is you know, a collection of plates here, I have to run the tilt uh, extensions here on the Ronin 2, but you know, a lot of people have those. It's not the end of the world. If you don't want to run those, you can get this all to work if you use the UAP3, which is the um, the other top plate option for the Alexa 35 that comes with the lightweight set. In terms of the other accessories that I have here, starting at the front, I mean, this is a pretty standard single stage LMB 4x5, and not a lot of people know you can do this, but you know, this is a really lightweight LMB option, uses the same clamp adapters. It's basically using the extra non-rotatable filter stage as the matte box itself. And then at the front, I just have this nice sunshade which comes as part of the rubber sunshade kit for the LMB 4x5. On the side, two C-Force Mini motors. At the back, I'm running basically all of the production accessories. So I've got a transmitter here with the view, uh, video transmitter bracket, which is also quite nice. Articulated mounting plate, top extension bracket, all the side brackets. I basically wanted to keep this as it would be as a production set when you buy it, um, just to show it's possible. I've even left the PDM-1 in there, which you would probably take out to get yourself a bit of extra balancing room at the back of the camera. Um, but it is possible to have all this nicely balanced um, even though I'm not a gimbal operator, but it does all work um, and there are no counterweights, which is pretty cool. So to get this out, I'll show you how that works without tools. I need to just undo this um, transmitter. So let me lock off my axes here. Right, so the video transmitter bracket that we sell is basically just one big easy to remove screw, which makes my life a lot easier. So I can pull off our ARRI wireless video transmitter. And then I just need to loosen, I'm just turn this around, loosen that uh, top uh, Movi to Ronin adapter and then the Bud 1 clamp. And then I can just slide this whole lot out and hit the release on the other side. So, and then I have the full camera package here, which I can then turn into production mode. So I can grab my top handle, which of course uses that lovely quick release mechanism. There's two cones at the front and then a single screw at the back. 
top handle is on, plug in the viewfinder connector, like so. And then on the bottom, of course, you have a, ch a choice of bottom plates, but I can put in this CBP5 into the dovetail on the bottom of the camera. Lock that off, go straight onto a dovetail. You know, put a battery on, put the transmitter back on, and you're kind of back in production mode, which I think is really quick. That's it for the SAM9 and the Ronin 2. I'll put the link to the other products that I've been using in this video in the description down below. And if you have any questions, of course, please throw them in the comments. I'll be there to read and answer them. All right, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.